some of our brothers that you have relationships with are no longer here in the physical. Right. However, those individuals have not been forgotten. Tell us about your relationship with Mossberg. Man, Mossberg, uh, I met him, where did I meet him? I, th I think I met him at Centennial, you know, I went to Centennial and all that. Well, I graduated from Centennial in 12th grade. I went to Lock, Lock High School in Centennial, graduated from Centennial. And um, I was already cam, so I came back and, you know, we used to do a lot of little rap functions for the high school, DJ Quick, Second and None, High C, and, uh, and others. Um, so I think I met Mossberg first there, like at a function we was doing at Centennial High School. And then I met him again in a, at a club, I think called Peppers or something, off the 10 or something in the IE. Um, he was he was just getting on with Quick, and he was making a little buzz for himself. And I knew him also. While, you know, I didn't know him, but I heard of him through one of my brothers that's from his neighborhood, that's from uh, Nellis, and uh, brother Michael, Michael Muhammad. You know, keep your head up, free brother Michael Muhammad. You know, he's, he's behind the walls right now, so that was his young homie. And um, he just he was a big dude, you know, real intimidating looking dude. You know, we bought that business and we bumped heads, actually. We initially bumped heads, um, but that's just what black males do. He was a younger dude, and I forgot what we bumped heads about. You know, was at a club. I think it was get, trying to get in the club at the same time, and, you know, he was trying to get in with quick, or he was, it was something. But then, um, you know, he kind of recognized who I was, you know what I'm saying? You know, he introduced himself, I'm, I'm, I'm Berg, you know what I'm saying, Miles Berg, I'm like, oh yeah, I heard about you, this and that, so that was kind of first initial meeting, but then after that, um, uh, I still was working with Quick, I was working with Quick, I think on my album, or on something, and he was working on something for Mossberg, so he was like, you know, I, I, want, I want you to get, get down with Mossberg, so Quick is the one that actually got us together to do some music, and from, from then on, like, that was my guy. Like, that was my young homie. Like, beautiful role, beautiful spirit. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's one of the one of the ones that hurt me the worst, hit me the worst when, when he uh, transitioned. Um, but, yeah, we did a song called, the, I mean, an album project called The Connected Project. And I think that was Tony Lane and uh, Stan Shepard, Shepard Lane, and DJ Quick uh, produced the album. So we got a song on there talk called Take the Crown Back. You know what I mean? And we did a couple of records together. So he was gonna be that one, man. He was gonna he was gonna be that one. So rest in peace, Mossberg, and you know, love and peace to his family and friends. Yeah, that's my God. So Quick was the one that brought you two together to do that project. Musically, yeah. Okay. So Quick was like me in a lot of ways as far as, you know. Just, just being a genius and, and wanting to, like a chemist, I want to put these people together. I want to put these two styles and these personalities together. Like, he'd do that with the beats and he'd do that with, with artists. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was another story about Quick, you know, last thing that, you know, it was, it was all smooth and love, love and respect, but it was, it was one, one instance that, you know, we kind of, we kind of not bumped heads, but I, I, I was disappointed. He spoke about it. And it was uh, regarding um, Dr. Dre and, and all of them was doing like a NWA reunion type tour. And, he, you know, he thought that he should do Easy es part since he's really from Compton. And I don't know if they was, they was uh, entertaining the idea of putting game at the time. Game was going to take easy places because they were looking for somebody from Compton. So they wound up not going with, with Quick and Quick was real upset about it. And uh, that's where the song You Ain't Fresh came from, that Quick <laughs> produced as another record that, that got me kind of blackballed or whiteballed or whatever, you know, because, you know, I was like, you know, he, he came to my aid when I when I split from Cube and, and was there showing his support and, and giving me hit records and all that producing stuff for me. So when, you know, he had an issue, then it was only right. Who we get? Who we riding on? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he's like, you know, Dre, because he did this and this and that. So did the Do You Ain't Fresh record. And that's when we, 92.3 to beat, or Theo, you remember Theo, the Asian uh, air personality. You know, Quick was real 
tight with, with him and that radio station. And uh, after that record that came out, it, you know, it was it was like, who cam this? And like, you know, you know, it, quick, you know, they knew it was a, a, a record that quick was dissing somebody, but it was it was real subliminal, right? But then, you know, my verse was real, real kind of like bad, you know what I'm saying? So I, I kind of went in, but I was riding for quick. I was riding, you know, I was riding for my bro. So once that came out and the buzz start buzzing, you know, and it started sounding bad, like, you know, they, you know, they dissing the pioneer and, you know, so uh, quick had went on the radio and was saying like, you know, you know, Dre is my guy, he's an idol, you know what I'm saying? You know, I look up, I always want to work with, with Dre, like he was keeping it like political, I mean, at a diplomatic or whatever, and kind of trying to downplay it, and then wind up working with Dre on something like that. So I was the villain now, I'm the bad guy, like, you know. So he eventually went on the air and, and on some interviews and cleared that up himself. But you know, I was side-eyeing like, what, well, like this, bro, like he did, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but he cleared that up, but that was something, you know, it was, it was a record with uh, Eric Sermon. It was me, Eric Sermon, and DJ Quick called You Ain't Fresh. And that was, uh, that was about or against Dr. Dre because Quick felt like he dissed him by leaving him out of the, the NWA reunion. So I just wanted to, you know, that's a campaign trail story. I want y'all to just think it's all lovey-dovey. You know what I'm saying? Certain things that I don't really speak on, but that, since Quick already speak, spoke on it years ago and cleared it up, then I can speak on it. Okay. So during the time that you did the project with Mossberg, mm -hmm. you were already in the Nation of Islam. Oh yeah, but when you ever heard any record from me, I was in the Nation of Islam. Even my first record, which was uh, on the Boys in the Hood soundtrack every single weekend. You could tell I was just getting in the Nation because my language was foul, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was on some real street stuff or whatever. So, as, as the years or months went on, like I was in heavy discipline and, and training my mouth. So by the time my first album came out, it, would, it was almost no cussing on me. Okay. You know okay. And you touched on this just a little bit, but how did you take the news of Mossberg departing from this life? Um, heartbroken, devastated, one of those things like, the, like how they say the good ones always you know, die young or they always take the good ones. Like, it, you know, it's just one of those things, like I grew up dealing with death, especially of loved ones at an early age. So it just might put you back in that zone of trying to understand what this life stuff is about. Um, what was the point? What is, you know, why, how did God really operate? And, you know, because so many of the best ones is only here for a short time for it you know, a few years, and they say, man, too young, gone too soon, everybody say gone too soon, like, but that, that be true, like, the best ones, like, they, they, they here, they do their thing real potent, they leave an impact, and you wish they were still, I mean, they are still here in, in the heart and spirit, but you wish, like, it, like, people, they mean, if Pac was still here, or Mossberg was still here, or such and such, you know what I'm saying, because you know what they'll do, but, unfortunately, they probably would wind up not here, because, just like myself, they would have said that about me, you know what I'm saying? But the ones like that, like us, that do it, that that do still stay here, like they they playing, like they, they act like they ain't valuable. Okay. 